So hi, I'm Kyle. I'm going to start right with the lesson because it's important. It's so important actually that I can't necessarily teach it to you in five minutes. What I will offer you instead is a couple of starting points. Uh, one is how I came to learn it and two is uh, why it works. See. How I came to learn it is I was going to tell this story about me being in Kuwait uh, where I was a military intelligence analyst. And you can imagine that militaries have always been really concerned with keeping soldiers hydrated, but this was Kuwait and it was huge. So we had these big warehouses just full of bottled water and all day long what you heard was, drink water, drink water, stay hydrated. Suffice to say that thinking about water was a pretty significant part of our day. I mean, the only other thing to do was like to go to Kuwait City and like hang out at the mall. But uh, this was 2002, it was right before the war, so attacks on soldiers were a very dangerous reality. So imagine the one time my friends and I go, we park underground, we take the elevator up, but it like cuts off dead, goes pitch black, and in everybody's head, we're like all thinking, all right, game over, we're dead. Here's how we could die. A poisonous gas from the ceiling. Maybe the door's open, we get gunned down. And like, no, no, no one says anything for a few seconds, but finally when someone does, it's, oh my God, we're all gonna dehydrate! <laughs> Right? Which was like scary then, but it's loads of laughs now because all we had to do was pull open the door and climb out and escape. And this was like a great metaphor for failure, right? Like potentially bad scenario, find some way to escape. I mean, this is, I had lots of stories like this. This has been kind of my life. I kind of escaped from intelligence world, but found myself in advertising. So, hey, escape from that too. And, you know, so I was going to tell these stories and, you know, talk about escape, but I got really concerned it would just be me talking about myself and not giving you, like, this perfect level of metaphor that would, like, be a practical use for in your life. And that really concerned me. So I had to think about it. And I did, and I ran into this talk by a guy known as the Mad Scientist of Music. See, he's always making, like, silly instruments and tinkering around with sounds, and he has crazy hair, and he, like, uh, he's, like, gets labeled as a failure as a musician often. You know, so at one point in his life, he starts saying, I'm not even concerned about that, I'm more concerned about this instead, which immediately reminds me of uh, NYU and Clay Shirky, and he teaches this I uh, ITP program. You guys know this, right? Where people make these fantastically silly things, like box of mud and sensors, and people always ask, like, well, what does it do? And he says the staff never asks that of the students, only this, because he says when it comes to doing important work, interestingness you simply cannot fake. Aha! That was my kind of solution, right? Like, okay, no longer should I talk about escape. It's much more important to talk about learn, uh, making failure interesting. So there was this question, right? Like, what makes things interesting? And we all know it's story, but the you know, story is a complicated thing. So that lesson I was telling you earlier, like, it's the second setting, uh, starting points, these, like, seemingly unrelated things. Uh, I call it ontological reappropriation, but you can still call it storytelling because I made it up. But either way, it begins with uh, positioning. And you guys might remember this. It's like this box of trash, but it's, like, it's, Positioned as art, like the guy Justin, he's an artist and he makes a killing selling these as art. The reason that works has roots in that word I used, ontology, which is a study of classification and how classification gives things meaning. See, what Justin and other artists like uh, our friend Marit here know, they've long known that if you first get people to classify you as an artist, it doesn't really matter if you call something a pipe or a painting because people will give you money for it, right? Like, they intuitively understand that classification and meaning are like completely fluid, something I only learned uh, in university. And not by advertising, by the way, like only by putting these five things all in one place <laughs> through which you understand that like, with the right story, you can embed meaning. Like, philosophically, linguistically, and psychologically valuable meaning into anything, even failure. In other words, you can reappropriate meaning through story, which probably sounds a little shady, but trust me, there's something really important that you need to know about authority and how it relates to storytelling, and it is this. It's something that's changed over the last decade or so. We live in an age of transparency. Now, it's counterintuitive, but follow me for a second. See, in transparent environments, the weight of authority is assigned by its audience, not its issuer. We're going to have to turn back to our friends in the military to explain this one, because in traditional environments, uh, an organization will issue a, like a symbol of authority, like rank over soldiers, but authority is like a completely made up thing, right? It only has substance when some entity provides it with weight. In this case, if the soldier doesn't believe in the captain, like the authority of the captain, well, the Department of Justice will uh, convince him otherwise with jail time. Contrast that with something like, you know, titles on LinkedIn where everybody kind of has to tell a story about their authority, right? But, you know, one way or another in an age of transparency, you're going to figure it out what I really do, right? So, in other words, if I want to, I can tell a story, but if I want to make my business your business, I still have to make you interested, which brings us back to this which again, I did not teach you in five minutes, but I hope I've given you some of the things around it so that you can think about how to apply these things in your own life. Because my challenge for you is this, to make all of your experiences, uh, failure or otherwise, uh, pieces of things that make people interested in what you do. And that's all I've got for you. Uh, I'm in the business of making things interesting, particularly for you know, businesses trying to adapt to a crazy changing world, but hey, I'll let you find that out on your own because I'm pretty easy to find. Thanks for bearing with me and enjoy the other talks.